strategies and understanding. I wanted to talk about this in particular. I wanted to talk about cycles of anti-colonial radicalization of young people here. I wanted to talk about that from the 90s until today. And I wanted to talk about the last period in which people like the young people in, their room, in the room today in their late teens and early 20s have entered into the, what is an anti-colonial movement actually? It's not the way the Palestine Solidarity Movement in general kind of really advocates for it, but it's a radical anti-colonial movement. And the reason I want to talk about these cycles is to, in, to inform and empower, especially the younger generations, but also to identify how in the last six weeks the state has instrumentalized the genocide in Gaza to conduct a vicious racist escalation of intimidation, policing, and mobilization of the far right. It's not Tommy Robinson doing it by himself. Come on, we know this that the state and the intelligence services have utilized the last six weeks to create their own victories against us, and that didn't need to happen. We could have put our victories and, in, uh, and, 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 and delivered our victories against the state, against racism, white supremacy, against the far right, and in direct solidarity with the Palestinians, and in so doing, increase our contribution of direct unity in solidarity with the Palestinians. Why didn't that happen? And why was this allowed to happen, that we've been intimidated, that we've been attacked? I want to start in the 90s, and I suppose we are of that generation, that we became, we met in our late teens, in the late 90s. So the cycle of radicalization that we went through was based on what, what is largely accepted as the great decade of global collapse of socialism and of independence movements and of anti-colonialism. It was the decade of devastation. No, and, and that was mostly defined by the collapse of the Soviet Union and Eastern Bloc, but that whole thing was attached to the whole global movement against colonialism and independence. So we were brought up in that, right? We were brought up the Black Unity Freedom Party disappeared in the 90s in this country. The radical Black and Third World Book Fair ended in 1992. That whole period of radicalism from the 60s was basically ended by the 70s, demolished through the 80s, and finally destructed through the 90s. Look at what happened in the beginning of the 90s and at the end of the 90s, politically totally two different places. Beginning of the 90s, we're still fighting back the Welling riot against the BNP, right, in um, Isle of Dogs. There was lots of the poll tax riots in the early 90s. So then we were politicized by 9-11, the British and American war in Afghanistan, the British and American war against Iraq. These are the things that made us think, wow, this is ridiculous. The level of genocide and imperialism is unacceptable. And we mobilized defiantly against the terrorism laws, against the racist inti intimidation, and I think we did an amazing job. But this period, last six weeks, is even more intense in the intimidation and racism. So that was the... Sorry? McCarthyism. Yes, absolutely. McCarthyism was a form of vicious state repression against uh, <laughs> radical socialists and anti-colonialists in the 50s, uh, in the post-Second World War in the USA. I mentioned that in relation to Claudia Jones, yeah. who got targeted in that, and Paul Robeson and many others, and Charlie Chaplin. Um, that side. So we were radicalized, and then, and then the cycle of radicalization from 2000 ends in August 2011. What happened in 2011? Two big things happened in 2011. Can you tell me what, what the international thing happened in 2011? Anyone? Yeah. Thank you. The NATO war led by the British state in the destruction of Libya. Okay. So the cycle of radicalization 2000 to 2011. 2011 was a massive defeat for us. You have to understand, what they're doing to Gaza is a test case to what they, they're testing us. Are they gonna respond? Are they gonna give a shit? Are they gonna unite and get angry and fight back? Or are they gonna roll over? And Libya was the test case. We are going to lynch all black people in, Lib in Libya by our NATO proxies 
Theresa May sent Salman Abidi there, remember, to join Daesh? And he came back and bombed the Ariagrande Grande concert in 2016 or 17 in Manchester. The British were openly organizing Al-Qaeda and Daesh, openly in the media, right? But the fact that they got away with the mass lynching of black people and the fact that there was no mass anti-war demonstrations on Libya, don't get it twisted. That was a major defeat of our class struggle in this country against racism and the colonial state. Then what else, what else happened in August 2011? August 1, so-called uprising. On the basis of what? The, the racist police killing of Mark Duggan on the Broadwater Farm Council estate in Tottenham. Four days of uprising, all the crews, and big up the crews, that is the basis of our revolutionary movement here. It's not the organized working class and the trade union movement. The last 50, 60 years have, have had proven very clearly what is the radical class struggle, who leads it. It's the children of the parents, the immigrants, who come from Africa, Asia, and the Caribbean, and we led the uprising since the 60s in this country. We led the class struggle in this country. But the same demographic with our white working class counterparts united with us in the gangs and the crews conducted that uprising for four days. What was the, was the left involved in the uprising? No. Was the left involved in supporting and defending Libya? No, it was supporting the bombing of Libya. It supported the lynching of Gaddafi, the SWP and all the other lefties, right? August 2011, 5,000 people in the uprising in this country get sent to prison. Did the left defend any of them in prison? Was there any support for 5,000 people from our council estates, the most radical people in our communities, sent to prison for stealing some nappies for their baby, or some mineral water, or some tissues? They got major, they got years of custodial sentences. Was the left involved? The council estates consider the August 2011 uprising as a great heroic moment but they, not, they don't want to conduct it again because they got sent into prison and after August 2011, you have, this is what Professor Gus John references, in the prisons, you have parents and children in the prisons at the same time from the council estates. So what's the next cycle of radicalization post 2011? So you've got this, this period from the end of 2011 until now. That's the next cycle. Right? So what happened from 2011 until now? What were the major markers of what happened? In 2016, some, some black rappers said, hold on guys, there's, there's violent racism and racist enslavement of black people in Libya. They, they finally caught up. We were talking about this all through 2011. No one listened to us. Right? No one listened to Libyans. No one listened to black Africans in Libya. No one listened to black Libyans. No one listened to any Libyans going through this. Right? So anyway, there was a mobilization at the Libyan embassy. We were there. I made speeches. Because I went three times to Libya during the war to stand against colonialism in defense of Libya. Right? Some of us actually made an effort for whatever achieved. So anyway, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, trying to conclude this as quickly as I can. But it's important to, to, to kind of reflect on these things in this way. Because these things are potential openings for us. Libya is an opening. Like Gaza is an opening. Is the left taking its advantage and radicalizing and organizing and going forward? Can you say the left has done that this last six weeks? Do you feel that? Do you feel a galvanization? Do you feel like the left are like, yes, this is our moment. Let's cut through. Let's unite the grassroots. Let's fight back. Let's be brave. Let's be courageous. Let's be creative. Have you felt any of that? So 2016 was a moment. And also 2013, UK BLM, the organization destroyed one of the most important radical grassroots working class movements in this country of the last 25, 30 years, the London Black Revs or the London Black Revolutionaries. If you don't know them, research them on the internet. An amazing organization that was able to organize the council of state youth in defense of people being killed by the police, racist killings either in the USA or over here. The UK BLM, the left, the police, and the intelligence services destroyed that movement, okay? So 2016 was a, was a moment. London Black Revs was, an upright, uh, was a movement forward, but got defeated by the same combination of forces that are failing the Palestine Solidarity Movement in the last six weeks. It's always the same combination of forces. The sellouts on the left, 
The sellouts in other communities, the police and the intelligence services. It's the same pattern again and again. So what happens next? The Corbyn years, a, a, a relative up, upping of consciousness, but you want to put a cross on a ballot box and you think you're going to get socialism in a colonial country? Is that how we get what we deserve? Of course not. So it was a very mixed bag, the Corbyn years. It brought people's attention to some left-wing ideas, but it's a total failure that delivered us into Brexit and then into the pandemic. And what happened in the first year of the pandemic, 2020? What happened in the summer? George Floyd gets killed in a police killing, and then there's an uprising in Minneapolis, and there's a radicalization here. That was another big stage of anti-colonial radicalization. Police station burned to the ground. In Minneapolis, two weeks of militant uprising in Minneapolis in the USA, and we were inspired here, right? Now, I'm bringing summer 2020, and I'm trying to finish off on this, to, and to parallel it with today. The parallel was the same on November the 11th the other week, when Tommy Robinson said, I'm going to come out and attack you guys to defend the colonial statues, yeah? They said the same thing in the summer of 2020. For weeks, the Council of State youth were coming out, not only black youth, but led by black youth and everyone, and, and, and they were defending themselves against police brutality on Downing Street in Whitehall, every day for weeks. And on June the 13th, Tommy Robinson, says, Tommy Robinson said, I'm going to come out with my people and we're going to smash you up, like they said on November the 11th. Everyone sold them out. The left, the same forces of sellouts. The left, the police, the intelligence services says, don't come out. When do we not come out when the races provocate? We came out and we won that battle at the Battle of Trafalgar and the Battle of Waterloo Station. It was the biggest defeat of street racism in this last 25 years. Tommy Robinson hasn't been able to come out onto the central London streets since we smashed him on June the 3rd, not we, Malcolm X movement, a whole bunch of network of black militants and others. He hasn't been able to come out and he found his opportunity on November the 11th. Did we win on November the 11th, or did his forces win? Did we smash him, or did he smash us? He won. We lost. We got into and all our solidarity and love to the spontaneous crews who came out to defend people on that day, because they did. A lot of our youth did come out in the Palestine protest. So to finish up on this, these are cycles that people go through. And I think it's really interesting to know that the people who conducted August 2011 uprising after Mark Duggan, the youth who went to the Libyan embassy in defense of people being attacked and racism in Libya, facilitated by the British, the people who came out on June the 13th, etc., we don't have an organized movement in this country, and this is our biggest weakness. The council estate youth have no organized leadership. Has there, do you consider a leadership in the last six weeks in the Palestine protests? Or is it a case again of spontaneous heroism and bravery of some of the youth surrounded by people who are not really fit for purpose in leading the youth? So, so these are some of the things uh, we want to kind of explore. So with that, I open it back up to you. Please make your comments, your criticisms, your reflections, 